Welcome to this new tutorial series. I am starting today. We will cover uh, convolutional neural networks, that they are more complex than the normal feedforward neural networks that we saw in the last tutorials, and we will show and understand how they work. Uh, we will see their performance and also we will do it in a practical way with the code. We will do the code and specialize a specific library for convolutional neural networks where you will be able to manage and create your own neural networks. So here uh, there is a basic architecture uh, that is called Lenet and is the, the, the first uh, and most simple convolutional neural networks. The idea is uh, what it reflects that is with an input that will be our image we'll do a specific uh, operation called convolution and we'll get some feature maps that you have seen here uh, these terms are very important because we'll be using them in all the in all the project then uh, we'll do the subsampling that in this case will be the pooling and we'll reduce the width and the height of the images. As you are seeing here, these are of 14 by 14 and this is of 28 by 28. Then we'll do another time the convolution operation with this with this um, feature map and uh, another time we'll do the subsampling. And finally when we have little uh, channels or images, uh, we'll put all of them in the in the fully collected neural network. That is this. This is a normal neural network like uh, the the network we done in the previous videos. And uh, the idea is, with all of these operations, we want to simplify and get the most important parts of the images. And as I said, we will go to the fully connected neural network with only one hidden layer in this case and get finally the outputs that in this case will be A, B, C, D. But we will be doing this in code with images, uh, RGB images. So uh, the basic understanding you have to know is that we have different images, okay? And these images will have a depth. So, for example, if we have for us input an RGB image, it will have three channels that will be the depth. And this is the depth. This will be 32 by 32 image of pixels and three channels. Um, and uh, also we we'll have some filters that we will we'll apply with the convolution operation to the uh, to the um, to the input image, and we'll finally get another image that will have as depth the number of filters. So if we have two filters, it will have the image of this two filters okay so this will be two and uh, you need to know that or we only need, uh, uh, can do the convolution operation if the depth that is this in this case is three must be the same as the depth of the input image so when we want to do the convolution operation, as I said, you are going to see here now. Uh, we have the RGB image. This will be the red, green, and blue channel. And this, as I said, the depth. And we will apply some special uh, filters that will be, as you see here, the same depth. That is true. And uh, because of the fact that we are using six filters, we'll have an input image of six uh, channels. 
And, for example, if we have this image that are of 32 by 32, then, uh, for example, we will have filters of 5 by 5. And we will get 28 by 28 pixel image. But uh, you will understand uh, how to get this number depending on all the parameters and the size of the filters and the images. Uh, the notation that is commonly used is we put the channels first. For example, if we want to represent this image in the notation, we'll put three because of the channels, this symbol, and then the pixels of the image. These um, filters will be of three of five by five, and this will be of six of twenty-eight by 28 okay you are seeing here uh, each filter will apply to the image and we'll do this in the all uh, the image and all the channels we'll iterate through all the channels and the image pixels and we'll get a value that it, it will depend from the filter and the the image so you as will see here uh, how uh, the convolution operation is done. Okay, we'll get, for example, this part of the image and we'll uh, do one special operation depending on the filter. So if this is the image and we have a filter, this only, uh, we are seeing this in only one of the, only one channel, well, okay? This is one channel, another channel, and another channel. So we will have three channels. And we'll apply all of these new channels and get the final image. So as you are seeing here, uh, we'll use the filter. So as you are seeing here, if we want to represent the convolution operation in a 3D way, we'll extract a, a piece of the image with its respective channels and we'll do the convolution operation uh, with the desired filter and we'll get a final value. So the idea is we'll multiply each position of the pixel and it will be added to the next. So we'll multiply this by this and add uh, and sum uh, with this by this. So we'll need to do all the multiplications with the position and then we'll need to sum all the map. So, as you are seeing here, we'll get the value. For example, here, 332001312, we'll sum all with uh, the filter that you are seeing in the corner, and we'll get the final value. And we'll do this uh, with different parts of the image. Uh, the part of the image that we loop depends from the stride. The stride is the number of pixels that we will go um, between one, one convolution and the other. So for example, here it's using one, but if we were using, for example, two, we'll then, if we are in this position, we'll go to this position. So we'll do one, two, and we'll get this image. So we'll do uh, the step with two two positions. Uh, then we'll have the kernel, that is the filter that we are using. In this case, uh, the notation is for the size and also the size of the future image that is our output, that is this. So also we'll have the padding. The padding consists on adding some zeros uh, to the um, to the exterior of the image. So as I said, it's like a margin that we'll put with zeros. So uh, we want to know the output size of the of the new image. We'll need to do this, this calculation. Firstly, we'll uh, need the, N, uh, the future image size and multiply and sum this with the padding and uh, multiply by two. Um, then we'll need to do uh, uh, get the kernel 
size and divide all by the stride and sum one unit. So, for example, if we are using this, we have uh, the n that is our image in this case, because all of these are future images. These, these, these are future images. So we'll need to get the input to know the future image output. That is this. This is the out, and this is the in image. So we'll need to to get the size of the future image. That in this case is five. We don't have padding, so it will be zero. Then the kernel that is size of three. We are using stride equals to one, as I said, so divide it by one and add one. And as you are seeing here, we'll have the value three. So this image will be three by three. That is correct. So in the code, when we will apply the code and create the code, the convolutional operation will have six loops. Okay. And no five loops, and each each loop uh, will have um, the corresponding notation. Uh, when we need to calculate the size of the new image, and uh, with this size we calculate it, we need to iterate through all the image, uh, depending on the stride and the padding, the filter and the input. And we will do the multiplication of the each position, this by this, and all the positions, and then sum all them up. And finally, we will uh, store it on the new array value that we will return. Then, as I said in the Lenet in architecture, we we'll need to do the pooling or the subsampling. That is, with the output image, uh, we have we we'll need to simplify this image. We'll have the stride also because we can iterate the filter that is in this case two by two. As you are seeing here, two and two. And we'll do the stride of two. So firstly we'll start here and then we'll go here and the same in the X and Y. So the final size is simple. We'll uh, need in this case depending on the filters and the stride in this case it will be of x divided by 2 and y divided by 2 and there are different uh, poolings the first is the max pooling that will get the most a uh, higher value of of the part of the image we selected so in this case it will be 6 8 3 and 4 that you are seeing here but then we have the average pooling. So if we have, for example, this piece of the image, we'll uh, get the out uh, summing all the values and divided by the number of the values that will be to uh, multiply by two, that is four. So we'll get the value 13 divided by four. So uh, as you are seeing here, the, this is the code of the pooling, in this case mass pooling. We'll need to iterate as in the convolution and we'll explain in the code. And here is the most important thing, that is we'll get the max value depending on all the values. So this is the, the value. And there is another an important thing that between the pooling and the convolution we need to do the value. Uh, this value is the activation function that we'll be using and is represented like this. If x is greater than zero, it will be y equals to x, and if x is less or equal than zero, it will be zero. So if there are negative values like this, we'll put zeros. And if they are positive, we'll conserve preserve uh, the the values they have. So the value is created, implemented here. 
as I said, is if it's greater, the same value if it's less zero. So as I said, uh, now that you know uh, a little bit how all the layers work, here we'll do the convolution. Then we'll do the value, and then we will do the pooling. So With this, we can do this uh, as many times as we want and with different parameters. So, in this case, they are doing convolution value pooling two times. Convolution, here value, then pooling, then convolution, another time value, and pooling. So, this is the new part that you need to know because the other part is um, in the fit for one neural networks that we will implement also in the code. So as you are seeing here, we have the fully connected neural network. So we'll have some inputs that will be the the, uh, the, the feature maps that we get uh, finally with the, all the operation and convolutional layers. And uh, we'll put it in a normal neural network with in this case only one hidden layer of 84. And we'll get the outputs that will be the letters. So uh, to to simplify these, all these values, we'll need to flatten these, these values to a unidimensional uh, array that will be stored as the input layer. So here uh, we'll have the input layer, we'll have the fully connected to the hidden layer, and finally we'll have the output layer that will be fully connected to the hidden layer. But there is also a new, a recent um, convolution neural network that is widely used and is very important because it's relatively new. And the idea is we have a image, a much bigger image of, as you are seeing here, RGB also. And we'll do uh, the the convolution operation with 11 by 11 kernel and a straight of 4. We'll get a new image of 15 by 15, uh, 55 by 55, and then we'll do the max pooling with 5 by 5. Uh, then when we do this, uh, we'll do this uh, in different uh, types of convolution layer and we'll finally get uh, the values and put uh, store them for the the fit for our neural network and get the output we want. And finally, uh, thanks for seeing the video, and I hope uh, you will be in the next video. And we will start in the next video to do the and understand how we will organize our code and the main functions and methods we must do.